The Reds won a game Monday night that they wouldn't have won last year. This team is just different, and I'm going to tell you why on today's Locked On Reds. It's Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds with myself, Jeff Carr, and my co-host Stephen Offenbaker is out today. He's going to be back in a couple of days, traveling back home after a long weekend here in the city of Cincinnati, celebrating the start of the season. But we are lifelong Cincinnati Reds fans, and I've turned an addiction into information for you about this team. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to talk to listen to me talk some Reds with you. I encourage you, if you're listening, hit me up on Twitter or jump onto YouTube and put a thought in our comment section. Talking Reds is what we do, and we want to talk Reds with you. Locked On Reds is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and we are your team every day. And on today's podcast, we are going to talk about why this win feels different for the Reds. Because, first of all, the lineup just did its job on Monday night bailing out a bad pitching performance. But also, I've got some thoughts about Connor Overton as a starter. I've got some thoughts about a couple of bullpen guys and uh, yeah, maybe a thought on Jason Vossler as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, the lineup picked up the slack on Monday. We are talking about a performance in which it was inspiring, to be honest with you. The way that the game started off just quickly down 3 nothing, and you're like, oh my gosh, here we go. And a rough start for Connor Overton, but the lineup came back twice in this game, led by the big home run from Jason Vossler, the three-run homer that sealed the game. And it was cool, too, because he wasn't actually in the starting lineup. Jason Vossler is a guy who's already hit a homer, he's already hit a triple, and you're kind of intrigued. You get a dude that gets the extra bases, gets the slugging percentage going, and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, what do the Reds have here? But he came in for Barrero. He came in off the bench. Jose Barrero actually, um, he hit a single, and he kind of came up, you know, trying to stretch out his right leg. He was he kind of was not necessarily grabbing at it, although whenever trainers came out to talk with him, it kind of seemed like he might have stayed in the game, but they pulled him out for precautionary reasons. They confirmed after the game that it was just precautionary and that he will be available on Tuesday that he doesn't expect to miss any time. So that was encouraging to hear because if Jose Barrero goes down and L.A. De La Cruz is still on the I.L. right now, really sure what happens there but regardless going back to Jason Vossler beautiful performance for him leading this lineup maybe Jason Vossler's that next Brandon Drury we've been talking about that all throughout spring training who's going to be that guy and Jason Vossler fits the bill coming out of nowhere and just starting to etch his name on our hearts you know are the Reds ready to build the statue for him or we're gonna put him in the Reds Hall of Fame Okay, maybe getting ahead of ourselves there. But what he has done so far has been phenomenal. And and looking at the lineup performance as a whole, I just kind of want to provide this kind of context because Drew Smiley, in his career, has just dominated the Reds. He's had eight appearances against them, seven total starts. He's pitched 37 innings. He's given up just 12 total runs. And he has 42 strikeouts compared to 11 walks. Absolutely destroyed the Reds in his career. The Reds returned the favor today, though, as um, water found its level. Just absolutely put it on. Drew Smiley, and I was happy to see that. And for those that like to get up for the pitcher win-loss record, hey, first loss of his career against the Reds. He was 5-0 coming into 
Monday night's game. But this was big, too, for the fact that we we talked about this in our extra preview. If you haven't seen it, uh, Steve and I did an extra bonus episode where we kind of just talked about the Red series here with the Cubs. This Cubs team is a very interesting team because it could be in the same position as the Reds are, or it could be, you know, fighting for a division championship. They just have so many, such a wide range of outcomes. And we saw that yesterday. The the Cubs lineup is very dangerous. The Cubs lineup is nothing to be trifled with in any, you know, Reds pitching is going to have to be careful with them. But when it comes to their pitching, I think the Reds have an opportunity to at least exploit it. And they did so in the first game. Now, Hayden Wesneski coming up here on Tuesday night, going to be a tough matchup. He is a good young pitcher, and he's better than Drew Smiley talent-wise, so it'll be interesting to see how this lineup continues on there. But you get two RBIs from Kevin Newman. You get Will Myers' first RBI and a hit for him. Another two-hit night for Spencer Steer. He's just had a phenomenal start to the season. And some great performances all around. Very happy to see how the Reds line up play. We, we talked about how... The first series of the season against the Pirates, the lineup did just enough. But tonight, the lineup was the star because it needed to be because the pitching wasn't quite there. There, there was, it was mediocre pitching, but just the way that everything kind of fell into place was so happy to see. And 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 Jason Vossler is a guy that I don't know. I I think it's too early to get this excited about. Jason Vossler, but overall, the way that he has played so far, coming out of nowhere, especially coming off the bench in this game and replacing Jose Barrero in the lineup, he ended up playing first base. Will Myers started at first base, moved to right field, and then you had uh, TJ Friedel move from right field to center field, which, speaking of TJ Friedel, talking about a dude hitting well against left-handed pitching, go back and look at his numbers and that's something that we've talked about before is that he's actually pretty decent against left-handed pitching. Hit a triple off Drew Smiley last night. Fantastic to see. Fantastic to see. And when the lineup plays like that, even mediocre pitching is going to be enough for this Reds team to get a win. But you know, last night's game is one you can point to as evidence that this team is different. I'm going to tell you why coming up next. Before we talk about that, though, I want to tell you about one of the sponsors of today's podcast, and that is Game Time. Game Time is an app that I love to tell everyone about. People have always asked me, Jeff, what do you use when you want to get to the game? And maybe you don't already have tickets. Maybe it's just a last second thing. You want to just roll down and find whatever cheap tickets you can find, I tell them to use Game Time. Game Time is my go-to app whenever I'm trying to get to the ballpark and just find the best deal available. They've got so many different features, whether you're talking about you know the best you know, price available, they do the price match where if you find the same seats for cheaper on a different app, they'll credit you 110% of that difference. Or you can set up all-in pricing. That way you know what the fees are, you know what the taxes are for your ticket. You're not going to find like a $5 ticket and then all of a sudden all these fees and stuff is going to bump it up to $20. This is the way that I go to every game that I don't already have you know, pre-purchased. I usually get about 10 games a year that I have pre-purchased before the season begins. This is the way that I go to at least... 10 to 15 more games. I use game time to do it. And you should too. And by the way, you can get a good deal today. If you go to game time, download the app, create an account and use the promo code locked on MLB. You'll get $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on MLB for $20 off download game time today. They've got last minute tickets, the lowest price guarantee. Coming up tomorrow, what will Luis Sessa show to us in his first start? Uh, We've kind of been a little bit mm, come see, come saw when it comes to Luis Sessa and what are we going to see from him. Let's see what happens. But I want to get back to this win on Monday night because this is the kind of game that the Reds lost a lot last season. 
tell me if you've heard this. When you watched games from the Reds in 2022, there were games where they would get down early and then they'd make a comeback, but maybe they don't take that big of a lead, if a lead at all. Maybe they just come back to tie it. Then the bullpen gives it up again, and that's it. That's where the script ended last year. It didn't end there last night because they go down 3 nothing at the top of the first inning. Cody Bellinger smashes that home run. And we that was something that we talked about in the preview as well, is that Cody Bellinger didn't look good in his first series. Watch out. He's due, and he's probably going to kill the Reds. First at bat, three-run homer. But then they come back in the bottom of the first. Beautiful the way that the lineup just worked tonight. It, it was like everybody came together. They saw the problem. They were able to to fix it. You get guys on and you get those timely hits. So they tie it in the bottom of the first inning right away. We're right back to even. All right. Board is reset for Connor Overton. And he actually pitched kind of well for the next two innings, you know, and, and, and really even through the third inning pitched pretty decently. And then the fourth inning he kind of throws a few more pitches than he wants to. And then the fifth inning, he gets back into trouble runners on second and third. There's nobody out. David Bell seen enough. That, that's kind of a scenario we were worried about coming into this game. Does he only give the Reds four innings? That's exactly what happened. And then, to make matters worse, Ian Jabot comes out of the pen, immediately allows both of those inherited runners to score, gets another guy on base. All right, Alex Young comes in, see if he can stop the bleeding. He allows an inherited runner to score. This happened a lot last year. Inherited runners galore. And on that third run, really, that was kind of a bonehead fielding play, too, where you couldn't catch the cutoff throw. It it gets past the cutoff man. Another guy, I believe it was Patrick Wisdom, comes around to score. And all of a sudden, you're just looking at this, and you're like, boy, everything's falling apart. There's no pitching. The defense is rough today. This is the script that the Reds fell to so many times last season. That's why the fact that they come back in this game and get the win, that just feels different to me. And and they talked about all spring training. David Bell talked about this. Nick Kroll talked about this. Joey Votto talked about this. all All the leaders of this team talked about how they wanted to come together in camp and be hitting the ground running on opening day. Together like a team, it was something that they said they didn't really feel until about June last year, maybe even some parts of May. And that was the biggest reason why whenever they struggled, it felt like there was added weight on their shoulders because they weren't leaning on each other. They were trying to do it all themselves in each and every one of those losses. And now you look at this and the Reds have already won as many games in this April as they did last April. Yeah. Yeah, remember that three and twenty-two start. We've already got three wins so far right now for the Red Legs in twenty twenty-three. So that in and of itself feels pretty awesome. One more win, and they will have a better April this year than they had last. And what are we talking about this year? The theme of being better than last year. So yeah, it's great to see because last year's team stopped after the second wave. And you had guys getting on base, and really it kind of felt like there were a few other innings where the Reds should have scored more. The Reds' lead could have been bigger. And yeah, it was the same for the Cubs. They had opportunities, and the Reds shut them down, which, you know, we're going to give some props to Revar San Martin coming up here in a minute because that was a beautiful uh, outing for him to come in in a very stressful situation and just shut the door. But there, there was that feeling in the fifth inning of the systemic collapse for this team where everything's not working. Debbie Bell's not pulling the right strings. The relief pitchers are coming in and just not being effective. I mean, Ian Jabot has kind of been up and down so far this season. It's again, small sample size, hard to say anything about a one player's performance, but Ian Jabot's not necessarily been that reliable. Alex Young, has been better than he was on Monday night, but he allows inherited runners to score. That's a big theme. When you talk about a good bullpen pitcher, does he keep the runners on base? Because he's not the guy. It's not his fault that the runners are there, but he is now tasked with keeping them there. The the runner gets charged 
to the pitcher who let him get on base, but that doesn't let the dude off the hook who came in out of the pen. We, we, that is something that we're going to be focusing on quite a bit. We didn't really talk about that as like a statistic to, to point out during spring training, because I think everybody just knows the inherited runners sounds easily enough guy inherits runners on base. Can you keep them there? They didn't do that in the fifth inning. Ian Jabot and Alex Young failed. But then the lineup, they get back in the dugout and they say, how can we fix this? And they fix it. Just an absolutely brilliant thing to see because this team didn't do that last year. There, it, it felt like there were so many games that they made one comeback and they got themselves into a position to either win the ball game or they were tied but then as soon as the opponent, whoever it was, and it felt like it was the Cubs a couple of times, but whoever it was, when they took that next lead, that's game over. Reds are done. Not last night. Not Monday night. This team's different, man. They got a lot of guys. They got that leadership with Jonathan India. They've got Tyler Stevenson as the quiet leader. They've got the pitching in the bullpen right now that there's been a couple of guys that at least to this point, have kind of come out of nowhere and are backing up Alexis Diaz. Alexis Diaz didn't pitch last night. Like, you look at a 7-6 to six ball game, and you say, great, good save there for Alexis Diaz. Wasn't him that got the save. We'll talk about who that was here in just a moment. But overall, I, I was immensely impressed, immensely impressed with that win. And you just say, Jeff, it's the third win of the year. It's the fourth game of the season. Calm down a little bit, will you? Mm-mm. Because if they keep that up, if this is the, the not the plan, if, if this is the theme for the season, fighting back whenever they need to, this team will hit the over. They'll hit the over. They'll hit my win total easily. I, I just, I love why and and I love that you know there seems to be something to this whole thing that the Reds preach throughout spring training about the singular team mentality that they wanted to have. You know what though? I know exactly how David Bell can best use Connor Overton in the starting rotation, and I'm going to tell you coming up next. Before I talk about that, though, I want to tell you about another one of today's sponsors, and that is Game Time. Really excited about being affiliated with this app. Game Time is an app that allows you to be the general manager of a baseball team. I know that I'm a, a guy that has always said, you know, I think that I could probably do this pretty well. But when you get on the Ultimate GM app, it's a very realistic simulation. You control everything in the Ultimate GM app, whether you're talking about trading players, signing players, the coaching staff, where you sign, you fire guys. You can make sure that the chemistry gets together. In fact, that's a very that's an insider uh, tip there for you when you download the app. Make sure your coach's chemistry gets together, that they all have similar philosophies, because that's how your team succeeds in this game. We're still getting there, though. You know, the Fairfield Hoagies, that's my team. We're, we're still building, still trying to rise up from the bottom to the top. But we are somewhere in the middle there. We're not at the bottom, but we're not quite at the top just yet. Fighting with uh, some other Locked On MLB hosts. I know my buddy Jeff Ellis up for Locked On Guardians just absolutely owns this game. I got a lot of work to do to catch up to him. But you can also play this game too. And, and by the way, you don't need an internet connection when you download it. You can play this anywhere. Play it on your time, and, and, and just it, it's a great game for any baseball fan. You can find it at probaseballgm.com. You can download it in the App Store or the Google Play Store today. And when you do, make sure you get your team set up. And after that, you go into the game store, you type in the promo code locked on, you'll get a 100% free bonus to your franchise that's promo code locked on in the ultimate gm app game store download the ultimate gm app today because ultimate baseball gm you can start your dynasty today thank you so much for listening to today's podcast or watching today's podcast uh, you can follow the podcast on all platforms including right here on youtube if this is your first time make sure that you click that bell to get notified you subscribe and then you click the bell 
to get notified whenever we've got new content for you. As the season goes along, we're going to be here with you every step of the way, keeping you up to date on everything Cincinnati Reds. Plus, you can follow us in between episodes on Twitter. You can follow me at Jeff Carr with three Fs. You can follow Steve at S. Offenbaker with two Fs. And you can follow the show at Locked On Reds. All right, something that I thought about last night as Connor Overton started off rough and, and, and Steve tweeted out, he's like, man, this is exactly what we were worried about happening. And here it is. He's having a terrible first inning. This is not good. He was able to bounce back a little bit, got pulled after only four innings. And I tweeted out, you know, you can't ask this bullpen. I don't know that you can ask just about any bullpen. But definitely the bullpen like the Reds, where, yeah, we've had some dudes kind of come out of the gate strong, but for the most part, we're not expecting a lot out of this bullpen. Like, if, if, if they were a top half bullpen, and I'm not even saying top 10, I'm saying top 15 here, top half of the league for the season, how surprised would you be? Because I would kind of be surprised. Like, I think they're probably around the middle. I think they're probably somewhere around the 18, 19, 20 range. But for the season, if that's how they played, that'd be great. But if you're going to ask them to get 15 outs every night out, forget about it. And, and we talked about, yeah, you know, two, th- two out of every three starts from Hunter Green, Nick Liddell, and Graham Ashcraft could be good. But that's the one start that's bad. And then if you go through the fourth and the fifth spot and you're only getting four innings out of them, really, if you're only getting five innings out of them, then you're still asking the bullpen to get 12 outs. And that's why I'm counting outs here because if you notice, there's been pretty much in every game this season except for the Graham Ashcraft game where guys are pitching, you know, two-thirds of an inning, one-third of an inning. And then somebody else has to come in and clean up the mess that they started. They've, they've had, they've been lucky in those instances, guys not giving up inherited runners there, but this is something where the bullpen is being asked to do a lot more than is sustainable. And I'm worried uh, on uh, Tuesday night here uh, tonight with Luis Sessa pitching, what's that going to look like? Because he's not stretched out yet. He's not, I don't think he's ready to go six. I'd be kind of surprised if he did. But with that, Connor Overton has to be the innings eater. And what I mean by that is not necessarily that he has to be good. It's that even if he's bad, even if he's getting shelled, this dude needs to throw five or six innings. And there's, there's going to be some nights where he's good. He flashed some really good performances last season in the very limited time that we saw him. But again, his fourth start was seven and two-thirds innings of two-run ball. That was beautiful. And we may see a couple of those starts this year, depending on how many starts he gets. But we're probably going to see some stinkers like he had against the Cubs on Monday. And I don't think that's a situation where David Bell – can say, all right, we got to get him out of here. We got to go to the pen now. And and maybe it is a situation where the lineup is working and he has to kind of manage that. Okay, the lineup's fighting for us. They're keeping us in a spot to win. Maybe I do go to the bullpen today. But for the most part, I think you got to pencil in Connor Overton for five or six innings, regardless of how they're going. Because I think otherwise, him being in the rotation isn't any better than having Brandon Williamson in the rotation. And I still think we're going to see Brandon Williamson at some point this year. A couple other things that I saw and and, and kind of thought about from Monday night's game. Revar San Martin got the most impressive two outs of the ball game. Stressful situation, guys on base coming in. Can he shut the door? Bingo, bango, bongo, two quick strikeouts get you back into the dugout. Just absolutely getting up on the mound and just clutching it. I know that there's two outs and you say, well, we kind of like to see a little bit more than just two outs, but if all you need is two outs and you're telling me that those two outs got you the win, Revar San Martin clutched that. 
And that was a beautiful performance for those two outs. And then Derek Law continues to just get the job done. It wasn't pretty. And in fact, you were a good catch from Jason Vossler away from a tie game. So you weren't necessarily the most perfect performance from Derek Law. But Derek Law comes in and gets the save. Alexis Diaz was not going to be there. We said this. In, in the preview, I mean, he pitched back-to-back nights. He pitched Saturday night or Saturday, and he pitched Sunday. He wasn't going to pitch on Monday. And, in fact, he didn't. Derek Law does. The Cubs, and I said this in my post-game reaction video, but, hey, the Cubs fought Derek Law, and the Law won. Something else that I've noticed, too, and I think we, and I think me in particular, because we – we kind of got sensitive to the whole Kyle Farmer experiment because there were a lot of people that were thinking way that they were way out over their skis when they're thinking about Kyle Farmer. But when it comes to Kevin Newman, dude's kind of endearing himself to uh, us. I don't know if you've noticed this. He's he's kind of kind of done the things right. I mean, defensively, he made a very nice play on a bouncing ball that almost bounced over his head. He was able to just reach as far as his arm would go, grab it, pick it down, throw it to first, get the out. He had those two RBIs in the first inning that tied the game at the time at 3-3, three to three, and it just seems like he's been coming up with some nice little spots here. Now, that might mean that in some people's minds he's going to enter into the Kyle Farmer territory should he start every day as shortstop over Jose Barrero or something like that. The Reds are not going to let him do that. That's why he's here and Kyle Farmer's not. So I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to enjoy Kevin Newman for what we're getting out of him because his career as a pirate, he was a replace. He was barely, he was just slightly, just a little bit above replacement level. Not necessarily, you know, amazingly high up there on the war level, but he got a little bit there, a little something, something. So what can he give to the Reds while he's here? And and could he be a trade ship come deadline time? But that's that's kind of what I noticed from that game. This team is just different. And, and I think that anybody that has watched these first four games, and obviously three and one is hard to argue with, and as soon as they lose their next game, the, uh, the naysayers and the Debbie Downers and everybody's going to come out of the woodworks again. So I'm ready for that. I know that's going to happen. But for anybody that has seen what, they, what the Reds have done in these first four games, and is still saying, and I'll say on all red legs, they're not going to be any good. They're not taking that next step. I don't know how you could say that because this team is just different. And that's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked on Reds podcast. Thank you so much for checking it out. Whether you listened or whether you viewed it here on YouTube, thank you very much for doing so. Coming up tomorrow, how will Luis Sessa's first start go? We're going to be all over that on the next Locked on Reds, so make sure you check that out. But now, for your second listen, check out Locked on Fantasy Baseball. Win your league as Matt and Dom every day give you the best waiver wire advice, maybe some guys you could go uh, buy low on in the trade market. They've got their studs and duds in their most recent episode from the first weekend of the season. So check them out every single day. That's Locked On Fantasy Baseball. It's just like Locked On Reds. Free and available on all podcasting platforms, including right here on YouTube, because we're all part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And as far as the Reds go, we're going to be all in on how this team continues to improve, how this team will play against the Cubs. And as we get closer to a series against the team that played in the World Series last year, you can bet we're going to be locked on Reds every single day.